So, we are doing this in two parts. I'm presenting the basics of this uh, project, uh, the conceptual framework, and Teresa will present the every core framework of the project. Um, yes, uh, could you move forward to the next one? Um, so, this is a consortium that starts uh, next month. It's a three year project, and it has 50 partners from 11 countries. University Helsinki is the coordinator, uh, then there's UNT, uh, Prime University of Berlin, Free University of Brussels, uh, National Capital University of Athens, University of Warsaw, University of Valencia. Uh, there's the full team. So uh, then we have International Cyber University from Berlin, uh, Istanbul Beauty University, uh, Central Social Sciences, uh, also represented here, uh, Gabriela, Chapel, and then Central Black Sea University, uh, Ukraine. Uh, to the stakeholder partners, stimulus for social change from Greece, uh, Greece and democratic society from London. And two associated partners, University of Southampton, and King's College London, Teresa, representing Southampton here. And academic coordination uh, is Emilia Fallen uh, from Helsinki doing the first year, I'm doing the second and third year. And our project officer in EU is Alma Martin. I don't know whether she's online. No, she is. Ah, but, right. Uh, this is the full uh, outline of the people in Bologna. So there are lots of people that we will go into this one in detail. But there is there is the whole group. Whole group. But just to say, this is a group of people that we've been working together for a long time. We've been part of these different projects. This was an opportunity to bring an academic family together, and this is what Pledge represents. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go to the contents of the proposal. So we have these three research questions. Starting from this observation that contemporary politics is anti and vengeful with affective polarization and uncompromising antagonisms holding a significant challenge to European democracies and their governments. A pledge uh, interprets these political grievances and emotional signals of frustration, disaffection, and insecurities that can develop in either pro- or anti-democratic ways. And therefore, our first research question is how to explain the development of citizens' grievances into anti-democratic politics characterized by output hatred and contempt, cynical stance towards deliberation, uncompromising self-righteousness, and uncivil, disruptive political action. For instance, as seen, in the Capitol Hill riots in 2021 in the US. Or pro-democratic politics marked by in-group solidarity, <coughs> out-group tolerance, empathy, cooperative and collaborative <coughs> decision-making, purposive and peaceful collective action, as seen in traditional and contemporary social movements like Black Lives Matter. How to understand transitions also from pro-democratic expressions of grievances into anti-democratic anti ones and vice versa. So not only want to, we, we want to understand how these two types of grievance politics differ, but how can we kind of transform people's anti-democratic expressions of grievances towards more pro-democratic forms of expressing them. And how can, thirdly, policymakers effectively address emotional economic grievance politics through emotionally sensitive policymaking and new democratic structures and practices that foster pro-democratic engagement with people expressing grievance. And then we use this co-creation uh, of these new democratic practices with stakeholder citizens, academic research, as other stakeholder partners. And uh, accordingly, the objectives are also threefold. First, to generate knowledge of the emotional determinants and outputs of this anti- and pro-democratic grievance politics. Secondly, to generate practical understanding of how emotional economy of grievance politics in interprets impacts policy making. And thirdly, to bring theory together, theory and practice, and generate tools promoting effective policy making and communication, which can enhance emotional intelligent and responsive democratic government. Okay, then let's go to these core concepts, because this is perhaps the most important part that differs from other consortia: the notion of emotional uh, mechanisms that are involved in this uh, project. And it starts from this idea of emotional economic grievances that I already hinted at uh, in the beginning. That there is this circulation of emotional energy within and between antagonistic groups, and is felt as 
frustration, injustice, disillusionment, resentment, hatred, pride, empathy, also positive emotions. That is kind of circulated and also monetized, used and consumed in social and political interactions and political agents in social political movements and parties. Also economically used in this uh, social media platform. And uh, our idea is to look at these emotional mechanisms that are these dynamic interrelations between emotions, values and identities. Because the idea is that emotions really influence people's values and identities in such a way that there is a range of emotions that when felt at the initiating stage transform into other specific emotions at the outcome stage. And there are these patterns changes that really can be explained in terms of certain regular transformation rather than depending on individual agents strategies of regulating their emotions. This is the difference to the traditional emotion regulation notion studied in social psychology. Typically the function of these emotional mechanisms <coughs> is to manage frustration and threat to self-worth as social recognition posed by these self-targeting negative emotions, envy, shame, humiliation, inefficacious anger, where the person takes blame for his or her inability to live up to his or her values or desires. And these emotions then drive transformation processes of identities and values in different ways, in two different emotional mechanisms that we uh, distinguish in this project. First of one is the one that we have been doing research on by, with uh, Teresa and also Christian Poncheva, who is part of this uh, project from Prior University of Berlin. Resulting one is this emotional mechanism that has reappraisal <coughs> invoking two parallel transformations. First, what was desired or valued and yet is unattainable, is reassessed as undesirable and worthless, and new values are, uh, are adapted instead. The classic example is Ace of Tail of a fox who cannot reach the grapes and says, well, they were sour, I didn't want them anyway. So this is kind of simple illustration of what this value transformation looks like. And secondly, there is the self-identity transformation as a failure or inferior that uh, transforms into a new identity of being noble and superior. That operates by psychic defenses such as repression, dissociation, splitting and projection together with the influence of discourses and narratives in media, culture and politics. So everything is happening within this larger social context with media, politici politicians and, and also policy makers, of course. Uh, but then there is another emotional mechanism which is a significantly different way of managing these self-targeting negative emotions. There are also transformations here. This self-identity as inferior transforms into emancipated and optimistic without a change in its content. So that the self is the self, same self that experiences these self-targeting emotions and the other directed negative emotions at the outcome. And the values remain the same the difference is that what at the outset remained unattainable to the individual at the outcome say, seems to be something that people can achieve together when they engage in collective action. So the values don't change. They are reinforced similarly to the identity of the individual. So that mechanism operates by sharing these painful self directed emotions with peer others also influenced by social media. Uh, culture and politics. But influencing this way of addressing your negative emotion is the one that we try to uh, achieve in this project. We want to move to a, a democratic design that would enforce this kind of social sharing of these self targeting negative emotions in contemporary societies to create this social sharing type of emotional mechanism rather than something more, which has these anti democratic cases. And, uh, and this is exactly what the conceptual structure looks like. So in the center you have these uh, key notions of emotional economic grievances and how they transform into different emotional mechanisms that then feed uh, either anti or pro-democratic grievance politics. 
and there's of course this mutual reinforcement in other, both directions going on. And uh, then there are these psychological dynamics uh, that is kind of feeding into the emotional economy of grievances, the inter dynamic interactions of identities, values, emotional needs, and efficacy, and trust that all are kind of same conceptual package that is uh, influenced differently by different emotional mechanisms. Then there are sociocultural elements, ideologies, victimhood narratives, affective practices, feeling and display rules and gender that also reinforce uh, these emotional mechanisms in different ways. And finally, political dynamics, practices of governance, thoughts of leadership, traditional political, uh, traditional social media that also interact with different uh, forms of anti and pro democratic grievance politics. And our aim is exactly to uh, use all this material to uh, engage in democratic designs that reinforce this emotional, social sharing type of emotional mechanism. There is some initial evidence coming up from democratic design uh, innovations that shared emotions have been able to create uh, or bridge disagreement in values between participants of these democratic design labs and more research is being needed but we are reading on this initial evidence. Okay, now there is a little bit over on this empirical framework of the project. Right, so as you can see there, there is a deep theoretical engagement in this project on how things um, can be explained based on exa exact knowledge in the field, but every project, um, like the other sister projects on, um, on emotions and democracies, tries to push beyond the state of the art to test hypotheses and, and generate hopefully uh, novel tested theories. So um, what we're doing, maybe I should sit here, what we're doing with this project is um, we are, our empirical framework is tackling, um, it's feeding into the previous slide that Nico uh, went through. We are looking at the emotional economy of grievance politics through democratic design and rethinking uh, the way we understand democratic engagement and democratic innovation. Um, we are looking at the emotional mechanisms that are at play and we're going to be applying our knowledge in uh, um, case studies in the Ukraine in terms of the pandemic and also climate and energy debates in policy, in the policy world. We're going to be operationalizing the emotional mechanisms with new scales. We have some preliminary uh, measures but we, we are keen and we have a plan to develop new ones. We're going to be looking, um, using lab experiments, surveys, qualitative interviews, uh, focus groups, analysis of social media, um, and, and policy and practice analysis. So I'll show you this in a little bit, in a minute. And then we are, our empirical framework is broken up in three um, empirical work packages. One is looking at the psychological triggers and facilitators of emotional mechanisms. The second one is looking at social cultural triggers. And the other one is looking at political triggers and the facilitators. So um, in there we have blended our case studies, so pandemic um, and climate energy looks at social cultural environments in which we can study, anti and pro-democratic grievance politics, and political environments we're going to be looking at the Russia-Ukraine war, and also the EP24 elections um, with analysis. In a minute, you will see this. So this is the data collection plan. Place has an integrated collection plan. It has one work package that does all this, where all partners work together to design these studies. And there is, um, so it's not split up in little projects. It's, it's, a, it's a really integrated project. Um, we have a national three-wave longitudinal survey across the 11 partner countries with national representative samples and 600 people in each wave. We have lab experiments. We are manipulating there specifically, testing the hypothesis involving the theories of the emotional mechanism that Miko explained, where we're going to be restricting and sharing of grievances in experiment one. In the second one, we are going to be infusing positive emotionality to see if we can shift people um, away from um, reason to mock. And in experiment three, we're going to be stimulating in group ties um, instead of other forms of identification to see whether we can again push the, the sharing um, component. We have qualitative interviews, and you will see them here broken up in different sets. We have um, four sets. Um, 
elected and appointed uh, policy officials, government officials and civil servants, foreign policy experts looking at the broader um, debates in the international uh, realm. We have interviews with citizens and we also have interviews with females because uh, uh, female leaders because a core into the pledge uh, consortium is also looking at gender as um, in this context of grievances. Looking out also at uh, new calls that have been coming out specifically on gender so this will allow us to do some preliminary work. Um, we have focus groups um, and uh, Gavin is going to be uh, running these from Germany where he's going to be looking at effective practices in grievance politics and we also have focus groups in the Russia, regarding the Russian-Ukrainian war where we conduct them in Latvia for obvious reasons um, with Russian speaking minorities and also in, uh, focus groups with climate change, um, climate and energy activists. We have um, as part of the core of the study because we are um, also tracking politics as they happen. We have been privileged um, to have Emilia with us who is running a couple of projects on the EP 2024 elections. So we have a social media study that is going to be uh, analyzing the discourses, the content there in social media and also doing an audio visual analysis and that marries pledge with other projects that have been funded with the, from the EU and you hear about this in a little bit. We have um, VR um, content that is going to be examined from Poland and Ukraine, virtual reality that is, augmented reality research there. Um, we have a set, the seventh component is one of co-creation where we do peer research, so we bring in citizens as co-collaborators um, to help us understand and redesign the projects in a way that they make sense for these types of stakeholders instead of treating them as subjects we work with them together as researchers. Um, they're going to be trained to our methods and we are going to be trained to their point of view and we are going to be collaborating in the design of these studies. Um, we also have a multi-level analysis of data that is uh, readily available. You can see them on the right hand side with the European Social Survey and all the data we have um, collected. But also we have a pledge data bank, um, our 11 collaborators have uh, been collecting data on projects similar to uh, Pledge for years, so we have put them together and we're going to be examining them across uh, the consortium, so that's existing data. So what you see here is the way the workflow is going to go, at the center of it is the co-creation and democratic innovation, so building in from the bottom up. Um, but you can also see work package one, we are starting with uh, an analysis of existing knowledge and first needs because we want to be able to not uh, do the things that have already been done in the field. The second work package looks at the conceptual framework and it's expanding, pushing the boundaries of understanding um, grievance politics uh, through resentment and uh, other emotional mechanisms. We have work package three at the bottom that is designing the framework that um, um, uh, I guess scaffolds the theoretical framework then we move to work packages four and five. Uh, work package four is looking at anti-democratic and pro-democratic expressions of grievance politics. Grievance politics is not only anti, it's good to remember that. And also work package five, it has the policy making um, analysis uh, running parallel and feeding into each other, moving into co-creation work package six, as I said before. And then we have work package seven, communication, work package eight, stakeholder engagement, and that will get us to the end of uh, three years, we hope, where we'll be all very tired. Here you see how the uh, empirical work packages four, five, six, and seven, um, and the communication work package all feed together to serve the needs of, um, of pledge, where we're looking at interactions between emotions, values, and identities in work package four, where we're looking at uh, the emotional sensibility in the policy-making practice, um, and the emotional needs of citizens and policy makers and how they marry up so we can uh, arrive at policy making procedures that are smart emotionally, emotionally aware as we say. The co-design uh, that allows us to look at practical recommendations at the design of the project across the three cases and then involving the stakeholders um, both online and in the real world. So what are we um, expecting to uh, achieve and our KPIs um, um, from this project. 
So we have a already a theoretical and empirical framework um, and a methodological framework. So we're going to be publishing papers. Um, we have an edited book proposal and presentations at conferences, the standard work. Um, um, and we are also aiming to reach students, so we are aiming to go to schools um, and universities and do more teaching related uh, content here. We are generating original data, the, like many of our um, other projects with the Longitudinal Survey, the database of the EU 2024 elections, experimental data, interview data and focus group data that will be available through the EU portal. So if you're interested in this work, just stay put for three years and then you'll be able to use those. Um, we have policy recommendations with policy with 250 policy makers that we have identified and integrated policy recommendation reports, policy briefs. Um, the co-creation and peer learning is really important, so we're going to be running workshops with 40 participants, with policy makers, um, SEOs and NGOs to uh, learn from them. Um, and also policymakers attending the international conference at the end, so we can put our recommendations in practice. We have coalition design uh, thinking with where we bring in together the team, us, of academics, policymakers, civil society organizations, and think tanks <coughs> to train together on redesigning and rethinking methodologies that al allow us to address grievance politics and the emotionality within. We are expanding knowledge through um, uh, opening up through the website, social media, newsletters, media briefings, media publications, and we are going to be preparing a MOOC, um, which is on the perils of democracy. Um, and a uh, democratic society has uh, kindly offered to have an open access toolkit available on their uh, page. Um, we are creating tools and uh, training material for media, uh, so we're going to be bringing in 60 journalists to, to uh, engage with them in uh, the emotionality of grievance politics and generating the MOOC. And then uh, the tools on uh, the public opinion research, we are having our eyes set on developing novel key variables, then we can roll out a bigger service like the World Value Survey. We've already piloted it in the Greek component with measures of resentment, but we're hopeful that a big project like this will give uh, inspiration to the big uh, surveys in Europe to adopt the measure so all of us then can share data and um, test our hypothesis even further. This is the flow of the project, um, and you can see how the work packages interlink with the analysis of uh, the existing work, the development of the framework, um, the quantitative and qualitative studies and traditional uh, media studies together in work package three, psychological determinants, policy, world, mapping of democratic design in work packages four, five, and six, and then um, all the good work that needs to go out of the project through Stenile and uh, the University of Helsinki. Um, that's it, I have some other, we have more detailed slides, but that might be for later. If you ask us more detailed questions, thank you. How long I've been talking about that? Um, yeah, that's it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Perfect.